it is often so easy to look at the others and think that we are better. For example, those who wear skirts to their knees and shirts to their elbows might think that they're more righteous than those who wear t-shirts to church and ripped jeans. And then on the other hand, those who wear ripped jeans and t-shirts to church might think they're more righteous than the people who wear skirts to their knees and shirts to their elbows. But both are wrong, not because of the clothes themselves, but because both are rooted in pride. Both examples are rooted in pride-driven obedience, which is the opposite of what humility is and modesty is supposed to be all about. This makes me think of when Jesus taught about the tax collector and the Pharisee, so I'm gonna read it for you. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all I get, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. We must not be arrogant or have pride-driven obedience the way that the Pharisee did. He was trusting in his own righteousness rather than Christ's righteousness. Instead of having this pride-driven obedience, God instead commands us to have faith-driven obedience. Let everything that we do come from faith. In other words, everything that we, we do should come from an overflow of our heart, right? We have faith in Jesus. We love God. We want to keep his commandments. We have a desire to bring him glory. So then everything that we do should flow from that. That is what faith-driven obedience should be all about. Now, with clothing being specifically what I want to talk about today and dressing modestly, I want to get into some questions that will probably start popping into your mind as you're thinking about modesty and how we dress and everything like that. So maybe a question that's coming into your mind is, how do I bring God glory with how I dress? And the answer is by obeying his commandments out of the love that we have for him. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But then that might lead to, okay, well, how do I obey his commandments? And like I've been saying, we obey his commandments by dressing modestly out of a faith-driven obedience, not pride-driven obedience. It has to be our heart's desire, truly a root of our heart's desire to want to please God and to bring him glory. But what about why? Why does God want us to dress modestly and does it even matter in this day and age? The answer is amazing really when you think about it like our bodies are temples of a living god and we literally have the holy spirit dwelling within us if we are christian and so we need to honor him with our body and show that we are not our own we are actually his we've been bought with a price and god chose us not because of anything we've done not because of works done in righteousness right but because of his mercy he chose us he saved us and chose to dwell within us. It's not anything that we've done or that we can do. It's all God who chose us before the formation of the world. Our bodies being temples of the Holy Spirit won't change, right? Whether it was a thousand years ago and how they dressed and showing and representing that they are temples of the living God versus today, it's the same, right? And God wants us to please him in this way and show that we are no longer our own, but we were bought with a price. The thing I want to say though with this is even though like a thousand years ago the way that modesty and clothing would have looked might look different in practice today that doesn't mean that it's totally thrown out the window and it's irrelevant right God's word remains true and is relevant yesterday today and forever right God wrote it and it's been kept in the word for a reason and it's important that we don't just throw it out the window because we don't want to or because we think it's old-fashioned the lord and his commandments are good so we can trust what he says my next one is kind of the main point of this video right if we dress modestly are we more righteous than those who do not and this this is so important that we get this right the answer is no no we are not more righteous than those who do not dress modestly or who do not dress like the way that we do right maybe people have a different conviction than us um, this does not give us a license or an excuse to just sin and to dress in a way that's like whatever we want to do is fine i have license to sin because of grace no the bible is very clear on that that we are not to let sin abound right because of grace no we are to dress in a way that's modest and god honoring but we are not more righteous than those who do not we cannot add to or take away from our righteousness because we're not trying to earn righteousness points by how we dress right we're not earning merit we're not earning favor with god in our choices because our righteousness does not come from ourselves it does not come from anything that we do or have done like i said it is christ's righteousness that's been imputed to us it's his work it's his merit it's his favor that he earned 
himself, right? Not us at all. It's his righteousness that's been imputed to us. So we can never walk around in an arrogant way and have this prideful heart like we're so much better and we're so much more righteous like the Pharisee did, right? That's not how we are supposed to be. That's like, take this as an example from Jesus. Like, don't do that. I can't do that. We can't do that because that's not what it's about. It's about Christ's righteousness and not our own. I said this so many times, but I think it's so important to say it again because we so easily forget the truth, but we are not obeying to be saved, but because we are saved, we obey, right? Because God loved us, now we love him. We want to obey him. That's the order, and it has to be in that order. Faith-driven obedience, not obedience to be saved, or obedience out of pride, right? Faith-driven obedience out of a love for God and a love for glorifying him and pleasing him. So with that, it's so important to stay humble, even when it's so tempting to think we're better, think we're more righteous, but, but we're not. <laughs> And every day we have to remember and preach the gospel to ourselves like I am a sinner who is in need of a savior and I did not save myself, right? Preaching the gospel to yourself is such an important practice and I'm so thankful for teachers online who have, and my pastor at church who have challenged us to do that every day because it is so important. It's not just like you're saved, you don't need to hear it anymore. It's like, no, I need to hear it every day. And when I, when I tell it to people, it is a reminder for myself in that moment too. So it's a really beautiful thing. So the last question that might be popping into your head is, how do I know what to wear? And I know this is such an important question and I could get into so many things with this, but I think the most important thing to know is like, as the Lord sanctifies us and makes us more and more into the likeness of Jesus, we're gonna grow in wisdom or we're gonna grow in conviction and it will change, right? There'll be times where you'll, and I still throw out things like we don't, we don't want to wear that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Or, you know, you do start to change a little bit of, of how you dress and your convictions, like I said, will change. And I think that's important to know. Like as we grow in wisdom, as we grow in knowledge and love for the Lord, our convictions and our wisdom in this area will change too. So trust in the Lord and trust in the Holy Spirit who lives within you to help you to understand your personal convictions and, and how you can best glorify him with what you wear. The biggest warning that I hope you take away from this video is just how tempting it can be to think that we are better than those who don't dress the way that we do. We must pray daily for the Lord to lead us not into temptation because otherwise we will fall into temptation to have pride and to have this pride driven obedience and to think we're better, right? Instead of having a humble heart that wants to please God because of our love for him and having faith in him. Something that I don't think it's talked about a lot is that having a prideful heart is so ugly and it is so displeasing to God. And I think we've all fell into that before, but it's so important to repent of this if we ever catch ourselves or somebody ever catches us having a prideful heart about this, right? We must repent because it is not God honoring at all to think we are better, to think we're more righteous, or to think, again, we're earning righteousness points to God. We should strive to bring him glory and obey his commandments, absolutely, but we have to do it with the right heart. Because if we don't have the right heart, then we miss the point, again, of modesty altogether. Modesty is about humility for God's glory. Not my own glory, but God's. These two things, right, modesty and humility, come from knowing that I am nothing and God is everything. He is big and I am small, and he saved me not because of works and righteousness, but because of his mercy. So even when it's so tempting to idolize our outward perfection or to not even think twice about what we're wearing or if it's even pleasing to God, to dress in a way that makes people lust after us and to think that we're better than anyone else, pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation. Remember who our God is. He's perfectly righteous and perfectly holy and his righteousness has been imputed to us. We are not righteous, only he is. Remember that modesty must both be inward and outward, right? Starting from the heart and then overflow from the heart. I know there are so many other things that I could say on this topic. Uh, I could totally make an hour long video about this or even longer probably, but a few more specific questions I just want to leave you with that you can ask yourself and I can ask myself as we're getting dressed or going to buy clothes or even figuring out if we need to get rid of some. I think these are helpful. So they, I have three questions. Number one, is this outfit reflective of how I'm a new creation in Christ or more so of when I was dead in my sins? Number two, is this outfit going to be loving towards my brothers and sisters in Christ? And number three, is this outfit more for attention and glory for myself or for the Lord? And when we fail in this area, we can repent and ask for forgiveness uh, because God's kindness leads us to repentance. It's amazing that he still forgives us and still loves us, but um, I just think of the hymn, Grace Greater Than All Our Sin, because his grace truly is so much greater, right? Sin and despair like the sea waves cold threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, 
points to the refuge, the mighty cross. Have a great day and bring God glory in all you do and all you say.